I welcome you back to the presentation on analysis of determinate structures. In the last class, we were just worked an example connected with analysis of simply supported beam carrying two concentrated moving loads spaced at a fixed distance using influence line diagram. In today's class, we shall try to discuss a small book work connected with this particular load. We will also try to consider the analysis of a simply supported beam carrying multiple concentrated wheel loads spaced at fixed distance. To begin with, let us derive the condition for maximum bending moment at a section in a simply supported beam when two moving loads spaced at a fixed distance crosses the beam. So as you can see the figure, we have a simply supported beam AB of span L. So we have two concentrated loads W1, W2 spaced at fixed distance which crosses the beam. Let us assume that the first load W1 is larger than W2. Now let X be the distance okay, of the first load W1 okay, from the left support that is A. So if distance AC is X, distance CB will be L minus X. First let us try to calculate the reaction at the right support VB. We can use the equilibrium equation condition sigma m that is some algebraic summation of moments due to all forces about point A equal to 0 okay, with an appropriate sign convention. So we will have three terms one due to VB, one due to W1, one due to W2. You can try to simplify and get the value of VB. You can also try to get the value of VB in a much simpler way. Okay, if you have any concentrated load acting on the beam, the reaction at the right support is will be equal to due to that single concentrated load. Okay, distance from A to that load divided by the span. So let me apply that to the two loads one by one. So if I am trying to consider the reaction, what is the reaction due to W1 alone? It is nothing but okay W1 into X divided by L. So this is the term I am trying to write. Okay, you can also add that because there is one more load acting on the beam that is W2. So how do I get the reaction at B due to W2? It is in value of load W2 into distance of load from A. So which would be nothing but, okay, so X minus D because X is distance from A to C and distance between the two loads is D. So obviously distance of load W2 with respect to A is X minus D okay divided by L. So I can also try to calculate okay VB using this simple uh, concept okay so once you get the value of VB I am trying to calculate the bending moment at C which is nothing but okay reaction VB into L minus X. So this is the, this is the bending moment I am trying to get okay for some position of load W1 okay at distance X from A okay. So I have repeated the same uh, steps that is I have calculated VB, I have calculated MC okay, in terms of VB. Okay, in this expression I will be replacing VB as W1 into X by L plus W2 into X minus D by L. So this is all I have done in this expression I have replaced VB okay, with that expression that you are trying to see right above. Okay, ne the next step what I have done is I have tried to take X which is common okay for w1 as well as w2 i am just trying to take the summation of okay w1 plus w2 into x minus okay w2 into d by l into l minus x i have just made a small simplification in that particular step i am trying to uh, i mean uh, re rewrite that expression again in this particular slide now if you just try to look at this expression you can understand that okay mc is a function of x that is x square it's a quadratic uh, expression because you got one x here you got one more x so obviously we multiply it's a second order equation of x so that means the value of bending moment okay at c 
what is c it is nothing but at a distance x okay from left support okay where i have w1 at that point so as x changes mc is going to change so we just try to look at this expression very carefully okay if i replace this l with x so l minus l becomes zero so at what distance x do we have l so that means if i just push this point d to b okay so x will be l so that means i am trying to say that okay so the bending moment at c will be zero okay when w1 okay is at b similarly if i try to replace this x okay with w2 by w2 into d by w1 plus w2 you can understand that the denominator w1 plus w2 will cancel with this w1 plus w2 and we are left with wd w2 into d and that and this will cancel so again mc will become zero so what you are observing from this expression is mc becomes zero at two locations one at b and one at d and it's going to vary in a second order uh, uh, fashion as you can see from this particular slide so what we are trying to say is mc will be maximum right at the midpoint of b and d that is at this point okay so i am trying to calculate what will be x okay for this particular position so it is nothing but okay going right from okay a to b and coming back okay by bc is it all right is what we are trying to say but bc is half of bd is what you need to understand okay because c is exactly between bd so we are writing it as x equal to l minus bc but bc is nothing but bd by 2 correct is what we are trying to write or we write x l minus 1 by 2 into this bd can be written as total span l minus ad so total span is l minus ad is nothing but okay w2 into d by w1 plus w2 so i'm just writing an expression okay for x okay which gives me the bending moment mc to be maximum correct so i am rewriting that expression okay over here i'm just trying to simplify this so if you open the brackets so minus l by 2 okay we get it out so l minus minus l by 2 is plus l by 2 and minus into minus will become plus that is half of w2 d into w1 plus w2 okay or mc will be maximum okay when x equal to l by 2 plus half of this quantity which i am defining it as g where g is w2 into d by w1 plus w2 physically let us understand what is this w2 into d by w1 plus w2 correct this in this particular term so if you just try to check we have got two concentrated loads w1 and w2 and r is the resultant okay of w1 and w2 okay and let me assume that okay r is acting at a distance g okay from w1 so the distance from w1 to w2 is small d so this distance is d minus 2g please understand okay w1 to r is small g and r to w2 is total distance from w1 to w2 minus okay it is g it's not 2g i'm sorry it is g it's d1 minus g it's not 2g correct so where g is w2 into d by w1 plus w2 okay if you just try to calculate this value of uh, g okay so i'm just trying to take the uh, uh, equilibrium equation which we have done in the last uh, 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 particular uh, problem so i'm just trying to take the moment of resist resultant and equate it to okay the moment of the individual uh, uh, loads about w1 so i'm going to get the term as r into g okay this moment of r about this point will be equal to the moment of w1 and w2 about the same point it would be w1 into 0 okay plus w2 into d okay so that is what i have written here okay i am just trying to simplify r is nothing but the summation of the two w's okay into g equal to w2 into d or if you rearrange this is what we get and here g is the distance between the resultant r and larger wheel load so just try to compare this with the previous uh, term so we are trying to conclude that the absolute maximum bm develops in the beam under the larger wheel load that is w1 okay when the mid span bisects the resultant and the larger wheel load so this book work okay uh, uh, we have used in the last uh, uh, solving the last problem i'm just trying to show you that the condition 
okay how exactly we try to obtain this particular condition now let me just try to go to the uh, next important uh, 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 problem that we are trying to talk about that is analysis of simply supported beam carrying multiple concentrated moving wheel loads spaced at fixed distance using influence line diagram okay so let us try to go through this example okay so we have a set of wheel loads so it could be three or more than that okay is what we try to say when we have two concentrated load we have exclusively the previous discussion that would be applicable okay when we have three or more it's better to work the example okay under this concept so we have a set of wheel loads okay which crosses a simply supported beam of span 10 meters from left to right with 60 kN load leading. So we will give you a figure connected with this set of wheel load which I have in my next slide. So we are trying to calculate a few quantities here. The first one being maximum bending moment at 4 meters from left support. Number two, maximum shear force at 3 meters from right support. So one and two here you need to notice that. So we have defined the section. Okay, first one at 4 meters from A and second one 3 meters from B that is left and right support. So when the set of V loads move we are trying to find okay for what position of the V loads we get maximum bending moment or shear force at this, this location and what is the magnitude. Now coming to the objective 3 here so we are trying to find the absolute maximum bending moment in the beam. So when the set of V loads move on the beam so please understand okay some section will develop the maximum bending moment of all other sections okay and that will happen for some particular position of load so neither we know the section nor we know what is should be the position okay both we need to calculate the next one is okay maximum bending moment developed under one of the given wheel loads so we can uh, i am just trying to take one arbitrary wheel load here so it could be any wheel load you can try to uh, 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 repeat this okay next number four maximum shear force that will be developed the left left support and maximum shear force developed the right support so the two are totally different and uh, uh, based on uh, uh, how much okay we get here okay so you can understand that uh, uh, absolute maximum shear will be greater of these two quantities okay now let us try to go to the first objective here uh, to begin with uh, i would like to show you the uh, the set of wheel loads so we have got four wheel loads okay in this problem the first one is 50 kN load that's the one that is leading okay the remaining three loads then we have the next load is 300 kN the next load is 150 kN and the last load is 200 kN okay the distance between the three loads is 3 meters so uh, distance from 200 to 150 is 0.8 meters from 150 to 300 it is 1 meter from 300 to 50 it is 1.2 meters okay this span is ab that is uh, 10 meters the very first thing is here we want to find at what uh, what is the maximum bending moment that develops at 4 meters from left support that means section c is given which we call as c we are trying to find what is the maximum bending moment that develops at c so please understand this is section c one section c is given distance ac is given as 4 meters distance cp will be 6 meters because total span is 10 meters okay so please understand the uh, thing that we are trying to uh, understand here is uh, bending moment uh, uh, will be maximum at c when one of the loads acts act at c so there are four loads here either it could be 50 or 300 kn or 150 kn or 200 k so when one of the wheel loads act at c so please understand bending moment will be maximum in the previous discussion when we took two concentrated loads we did by trial and error we first placed uh, the first load we calculated the bending moment and then we placed the second load we calculated the bending moment we compared okay and then decided which is maximum but here when when you have got uh, more than two loads that procedure becomes tedious so we would like to first determine what load should be placed at c to get maximum bm at c by conducting a test okay and then place that load and uh, at c and then calculate so let us try to go through the steps that we are trying to uh, i mean follow here so uh, as we said maximum bm occurs at c 
when one of the loads acts at C. So for you to do this, we will try to conduct the following test to find the load to be placed at C to get maximum Vm at C. Okay, so how do we start the test? We start the test by considering the first load W1. Okay, the first load. Here it is 50 kN. So we first place the load 50 kN at C. Okay, right. Okay, and please understand when try to say we are trying to take two positions of uh, 50 kN load. That is we are trying to say that when 50 kN load crosses C. Okay, so we get maximum Vm at C is what we are trying to say. Okay, so first let us try to position the first load just to the left of C. Okay, and please understand once you do this, we try to calculate what is the average load okay in portion AC. Okay, and then we try to uh, 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 compare that with the average load in portion CB. So, how do we calculate the average load? It's nothing but total load okay present in portion AC divided by distance AC that is 4 meters okay and then how do I calculate the average load in portion CB it's nothing but the total load present in portion CB divided by 6 meters that is CB so that's how I try to calculate the average load so first I position load 50 kilonewton load to the left of C calculate the average load in portion AC and then calculate the average load in portion CB okay and once I do this, I try to take the difference, okay, between the two average loads, okay, and I am trying to note down the sign of that difference. Is it positive or is it negative? This is what I try to do right now. Now, once I have done this, now I allow the 50 kilonewton load to cross over, okay, uh, section C. That means I move the first load, that is 50 kilonewton load, to cross, okay, C, okay, that is it will be to the right of C. When I am trying to move to the right of C, please understand, it is good to move to the maximum possible extent in the sense that the next load, 300 kilonewton load, okay, is just to the left of C. The intention of doing this is, if you have got more than 3 or, or 4 or 5 loads following a 50 kilonewton load, and if the distance between the, those loads, okay, are more than 4 meters, so we are trying to see that maximum possible loads okay are being brought on to portion ac when you when when you try to move 50 kilonewton load so that means i am now trying to move 50 kilonewton load okay that is to the right of c when i move it i will try to move to such an extent that the next load 300 kilonewton load lies just to left of c having done this i try to calculate the average load in portion ac which is nothing but the summation of all the loads present in portion AC divided by 4 meters okay and again also calculate what is the average load in portion CB which is nothing but the total load present in portion CB divided by 6 meters span is it alright this is what I try to do so once I try to calculate this okay I take the difference okay between the two loads okay right and then try to find out the sign okay that we have connected to this particular case so once I have determined the uh, two signs, I will just check whether these signs okay, are of the same nature. That is, both are positive or both are negative. Okay, if both are positive, please understand that. Okay, so uh, th this load, whatever load that it crosses over the beam, does not cause maximum BM at C. So we are trying to consider the next load for the test. So if you just try to look here, so we are trying to say the difference in the two averages are of the same sign, then repeat the test considering the next load that is W2, in this case probably it is 300 kilonewtons. So again we try to do this, okay, initially 300 kilonewtons will be placed to the left of C, we calculate the average load in portion AC, okay, for, this, for that same position of 300 kN, I try to calculate the average load in portion CB. Okay, how do I calculate the average load in any of the portion? Total load present divided by either AC or CB. Okay, so I just try to take the difference. Okay, watch the sign. Okay, then I try to move the next load. Okay, and then I try to uh, 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 again uh, calculate the difference. Okay, between the average load to the left and right. Okay, then watch for the sign. Okay, if the difference between the two averages are of different sign, then I stop the test. Okay, I have to continue the test till I get a change in sign. 
okay when i try to cross make a, make a particular load cross the section having determined identified the load okay that has to be placed at c okay so i try to place it right at c and try to get the maximum bm at c how do i do that okay so please understand first i place that particular load at c then place the other loads relative to that okay where on the beam then i try to draw the ild for bm at c then also calculate the ordinates okay at other other v loads in ild then calculate the bending moment at c using the ild and that will give the maximum bm at c anyway right now i have explained the procedure now let us try to do the same problem now when i do the test normally i would be putting a small table here okay so that you can clearly understand the test that we are trying to talk about now i have explained the test now i am trying to implement the test through this particular table so i start with the first wheel load so if you just try to look at this carefully this particular figure i have placed 50 kiloton load just to the left of c right just to the left of c i hope you can clearly see this right so what is it what is what do we have in the table okay which load we are trying to consider column 1 next position is it to the left or is it to the right okay next sigma w suffix l divided by ac ac is the distance what is sigma wl summation of all loads lying to left of c divided by distance ac okay next sigma w suffix r divided by cv what is sigma w suffix r give you it is something but the summation of all loads lying to the right of c okay next cb is the distance okay which is nothing but 6 meters for this problem then we take the difference difference means what it is sigma w suffix l by ac minus sigma w suffix r divided by cb so we just try to check here we have got the difference what is the sign plus that's what we are trying to record is it positive or is it negative now let us try to do this calculation so i am considering 50 kiloton load okay now i have placed it to the left of c now let us try to calculate what is the total load in portion ac so the total load in portion ac is 200 plus 150 plus 300 plus 50 that comes to 700 so i i am trying to get this as 700 divided by 4 which comes to 175 okay now i for this for this position that means when 50 kiloton load is to the left of c what is the average load in portion cb there is no load right now on portion cb so it is 0 by 6 which is 0 So now we take the difference. 175 minus 0 is plus 175. I have made it as positive. So now I allow this 50 kiloton load to cross over C. So once I allow it to cross over C, please understand, I'll be moving it to such an extent that, okay. So the next load, 300 kiloton load, okay, is lying just to the left of C. Correct. This is how I position the load. correct now let me complete the table here okay now the position is i have made 50 kiloton load to the right okay now let us try to calculate the average load okay in portion ac the average load in portion ac is 200 plus 150 plus 300 that would be okay 650 so 650 divided by ac is 4 which comes to 162.5 now for the same position let me try to calculate the average load in portion cb which is nothing but total load is only 50 because there is only one load so you got 50 divided by 6 you have got 8.33 so the difference of 162.5 minus 8.33 will be plus 154.17 the sign is positive so please understand if the sign is same that means positive okay or it could be negative also right okay if the sign is same okay please understand the uh, we, this is not the load that has to be placed at c so we have to now do the test okay for the next load so what is my next load 300 now i go ahead and do the test for 300 so i am considering 300 kiloton load you can clearly see that in column 1 okay regarding position it is placed to the left so whatever calculation we have made in the previous table okay by trying to take 50 kn to the right the same values are applicable when we say 300 kn to the left so all these numbers okay we had repeated in the previous slide okay by considering 50 kn to the right 
so now it is 300 to the left same values we are writing 650 by 4 162.5 50 by 6 188.33 that is difference plus 154.17 positive now i move 300 kilonewton load to the right such that the next load comes just to the left of c correct so we are trying to get this information here so we are trying to say it is lying to the left of c correct so now let us try to calculate the average load in portion ac and the average load in portion cb what is the average load in portion ac it is 200 plus 350 divided by 4 so you can clearly see here okay that is 350 by 4 it is 87.5 okay and what is the average load in portion cb it is 300 plus 50 okay divided by 6 okay that is 58.33 so just try to take the difference it is plus 29.17 positive so again the sign okay remains same whether 300 kn is placed to the left or right okay the difference has positive sign so we are trying to say this is not the load to be placed okay at c okay to get maximum bm at c so we continue the test okay my next load is 150 kn i am considering now 150 kn load i am now once placing it to the left of c and once placing to the right of c now when i say i am placing it to the left of c please understand that okay we have uh, the situation is very similar to saying that 300 is to the right of c I am uh, uh, repeating these values that I had uh, 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 written for the previous test in the previous test that is 350 by 4 okay 87.5 and 350 by 6 58.33 difference plus 29.17 sign is positive now let me allow this 150 kn load to pass over C okay in the process you can understand that okay 200 okay will be lying to the left of C so this is what I am trying to so for this case so let us try to understand what is the average load in ac it is nothing but 200 by 4 that is 50 what is the average load in portion cb okay that is nothing but the summation of these three loads 150 350 so that would be 500 by 6 83.33 so 50 minus 83.33 is minus 33.33 you got a negative sign so we try to tell okay so 150 kn load should be placed at C to get maximum BM at C right so we have identified which is a load that has to be placed at C now having identified the load to be placed at C correct first let us uh, draw the influence line diagram okay for uh, section C so please understand here small a is 4 meters that is distance AC and small b is nothing but 6 meters distance CB so uh, the ILD influence line diagram for bending moment at C is a triangle it has a maximum ordinate at C okay and how do I calculate this ordinate it is AB by L 4 into 6 divided by 10 that would be 2.4 correct so having written the ILD the next thing I will be doing is okay place the load okay that, uh, that, that I mean, at C the, the right load at C so which is the right load at C it is 150 kilonewtons right so I have placed 150 kilonewton at C I also have placed the other loads relative to uh, 150 kilonewton load that means totally there were four loads there is 200 lying at a distance of 0.8 meters to the left of 150 300 lying at a distance of 1 meter to the right of 150 and 50 kilonewton load okay lying to the right of 150 at a distance of 2.2 meters so I have tried to uh, 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 locate all the uh, loads. So once I have placed all the loads, I will be trying to calculate the ordinates in ILD under the loads. How do I do that? Using rule of three or similar triangles. So the ordinates, corresponding ordinates here are 1.92. Okay, under 200, this already I have calculated AV by L 2.4. Correct, this is uh, 2 under 300 kn load and 1.52 under 50 kiloton load now having done this i now try to use uh, the expression that is a bending moment at c is nothing but sigma of intensity of load multiplied by ordinate in ild under the load there are four four loads there are four ordinates 
you try to multiply each of the load by the corresponding coordinates okay and sum it up there is 200 into 1.92 plus 150 into 2.4 plus 300 into 2 plus 50 into 1.52 which gives me m is equal to 1420 kilonewton meter okay this is the maximum bm that will occur at sea and this will happen when 150 kilonewton load is placed at sea i hope you have understood okay this particular problem okay so first thing is we do a test okay uh, to identify the load to be placed at c okay to get maximum bm so testing uh, is, a, is a very simple thing here so we start with the first load once place it to the left of c and then once place it to the right of c when you're trying to place it to the left of c you try to place the load just to the left of c when you're placing it to the right of c okay you just take it sufficiently to the right such that the next load following it is right uh, uh, to the uh, just just to the left of C. With that position, you'll be calculating the average load in portion AC and the average load in portion CB, right? So both positions to the left, you'll be trying to calculate average left and right. When you're when you are trying to push to the right of C, again you'll be calculating the the average values. You'll be taking the difference for both the cases, okay? And then compare the sign, okay? So once the sign changes, you need to understand, okay? That is the load that has to be placed at C. To get maximum BM at C. So now let us go to the next objective. My next objective is given a section, okay, say 3 meters from right support. So uh, what will be the maximum shear force, okay, that will be developed, okay, at that particular section. So again, the same set of loads, okay, we are trying to consider the same beam span 10 meters, correct. So first let us try to write the section, okay, which is given. So here is uh, CB is 3 meters given. So obviously AC is 7 meters that is 10 minus 3. So please understand here again maximum shear force occurs at C. Okay when one of the wheel loads act at C. So that's what you need to understand here. Correct. Now uh, we will conduct the following test to find the load to be placed at C to get maximum shear force at C. So what is one of the loads should be placed? So we'll be trying to determine which is the force, which is the load to be placed at C. So let's try to talk about the test. Okay. So what we do is okay. So first observe. Okay. Uh, what are the distances of AC and CB? Now we have said C is uh, three meters to the right of uh, 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 from from point B from the right support. So for that we have got the numbers as uh, AC is seven meters and BCB is three meters. So please understand, okay, so one of the portions will be larger, either AC is larger or CB is larger, okay. So if I give C right at the mid span, both will be same, right. So we are trying to say, okay, so uh, in this particular case, AC is larger than portion CB. So having said that, okay, the next thing is now we try to place all the loads, okay, on portion AC such that, okay the first load is right at c so that's how we try to start the test now once i have positioned the loads okay right like that that is 50 kn load is at c now i conduct a small test what is the test i'm trying to conduct okay whether the ratio w1 by d1 is it greater than sigma w suffix i by l so what is w1 the first load what is D1? Distance of the first load, okay, to the second load, right? So that means distance of second load from first load is D1. In this case, it is 1.2 meters. Is it greater than the summation of sigma wi? That means all loads, okay, on the beam, right? So uh, if there are too many loads, some of the loads may be uh, outside the, the span, in which case you are not supposed to consider those uh, loads which are not okay uh, between a and b but however when i say sigma suffix w suffix i you have to take all loads lying in portion a b so divided by the span which is nothing but 10 meters in this particular case so you are supposed to conduct this particular test now having conducted the test okay so that means left and right ratio so please understand if this condition okay is true then please understand okay place the load w1 at c and then the other loads relative to that and then calculate the uh, shear force uh, at C okay using the influence line diagram okay and please understand and that will give us 
the maximum shear force at C. Okay, so when 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 uh, when the set of wheel loads cross uh, the beam, but if it, it is false, if this condition is false, okay, we try to bring the next load onto C. That is in this particular case, the second load W2 or W suffix I plus one. In the previous case, I equal to one. Okay, and uh, uh, in this case, probably it would be 300. And D suffix I plus one. That is D2. What is D2? Distance of the second load from the third load. That is one meter. Okay, is it greater than sigma W suffix I by L? So if this condition is true, then second load should be placed at C, and that will give us maximum shear force at C. Is what you need to understand. Okay, if uh, uh, if if this particular condition is true, place the load and then calculate the value. Is it all right? Okay. So uh, please understand the test should be performed. Okay, till the correct load is found. Okay, which is to be placed at C to get maximum shear force at C. Now let us try to uh, perform that particular test. Okay, and then try to understand. Okay, how we do this particular test. Now the section C is given three meters. Okay, so that means AC is seven meters, CB is three meters. First draw ILD for uh, this is not bending moment. It is shear force. ILD for shear force at C. How does the ILD for SF look like? It looks like two right angle triangles, one above, one below the baseline. Okay, the ordinate below the baseline is A by L, that is 7 by 10 is 0 0.7 and the ordinate above the baseline is B by L, so B is 3 by 10, 0 0.3. Please understand, okay, all the uh, ordinates in, in, in uh, the ILD lying below the baseline is negative and all the ordinates Okay, in ILD, in that portion of ILD, lying above the baseline are positive. So this is one thing that you need to observe. Okay, now let us try to perform the test. So let me first place the first load, 50 kilonewton load at C and then conduct the test. So how do I conduct the test? I take the ratio of W1 by D1. Okay, so please understand here, look at this test. Okay, whether W1 by D1 okay w1 by d1 is it greater than sigma w i by l so w1 is what the first load 50 correct what is d1 distance of first load to second load that is 1.2 so look at this 50 by 1.2 is it greater than all the loads lying on the beam so which is nothing but 700 correct divided by span 10 so here i am trying to get this as 41.66 greater than 70 it is false okay so 41.66 is less than 70 it's not uh, I mean correct okay so we are trying to say false that means what 50 kilogram load does not give you maximum BM when it is placed at C so now we try to go to the next load what is the next load that we are trying to talk about okay so the next load is 300 kiloton since this condition is false we will repeat the test con conducting considering the next load that is 300. Now I place 300 kiloton load okay at C. So please understand when I do that okay all the loads okay will be continuously moving on the beam correct. So I just try to place 300 kiloton load okay at C okay. So I now conduct the test okay how do I conduct the test okay this load which I have placed at C divided by distance of this load to the next load that is 300 by 1. So I'm just trying to say 300 by 1 is it greater than all the loads on the beam that is 700 by 10. So that is I'm trying to get 300 by 1 is 300, 700 by 10 is 70. So I'm trying to say that 300 is greater than 70, it is true. So once I get the condition to be true, please understand this is the load that has to be placed okay, at C okay, to get maximum uh, uh, shear force okay at C so we try to up, uh, apply this okay load this is how I try to consider the loads to be placed on the ILD influence line diagram please understand ILD for SF not for I this is not ILD for BM it is ILD for SF so once I have placed 300 kN and the other loads relatively okay that is with, res uh, with respect to 300 I also calculate the ordinates in ILD okay in the influence line diagram how do I do this rule of three so for example here 7 meters it is 0 0.7 okay so under 150 it is one less 6 meters what is the value obviously it is 0 
okay 200 okay so that will be I'll be deducting 1.8 from 5 so that would be 5.2 so at 5.2 meters what is the value okay so it is 0.52 I try to calculate the ordinates so once I get the ordinates I calculate the shear force by using the equation intensity of load multiplied by the ordinate in ILD under the load so there are four uh, 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 loads and four ordinates so we will start so 200 into minus 0.52 you have to be careful here because uh, the ordinates in, in this portion AC are negative and the ordinates in portion CB are positive and at C you got two ordinates one plus and minus you have to be careful when you take the ordinates so let us start 200 into minus 0.52 then 150 into minus 0 0.6 now for 300 there are two ordinates one is plus 3 one is minus 0 0.7 so please understand in this particular case okay it is good to consider the negative ordinates because already you have got two negative ordinates okay in the term so it's better to have one more negative ordinate here that is at, at C rather than taking the positive ordinate that is 0 point, plus 0 0.3 so I have taken 300 into minus 0 0.7 plus 50 into 0 0.18 okay the summation of all these things will give me minus 395 kiloton so this is the maximum shear force we can expect at C okay when the set of wheel loads okay cross the beam okay so this is how you try to calculate the maximum shear force at a given section now uh, once we have done this we will go to the next objective the next objective is to find the absolute maximum bending moment in the beam when the multiple moving wheel loads cross the beam so this is the given set of wheel loads and that is the beam given beam that we are trying to talk about now the condition that we are trying to uh, specify here is very similar to what we have done but please understand there is a small change here okay with respect to which load like let's try to read here absolute maximum bm develops in the beam under that wheel load okay which is nearer to the resultant okay when the mid span bisects the resultant and the nearest wheel load please understand is almost similar to what we have considered in case of two concentrated loads when we have two concentrated loads please understand only two loads the resultant always lies to the lies nearest to the larger wheel load so we were trying to uh, if you apply the same statement there okay under that wheel load which is nearer to the resultant obviously it is the larger wheel load so we directly tell that in the I mean we have two concentrated loads we try to say it develops under the larger wheel load when the mid span bisects the resultant and the nearest wheel load but however when we have more than two loads so we first calculate the resultant check which load is closest to the resultant and we try to say it occurs at the load which is closest to the resultant okay when the mid span bisects the resultant and the nearest wheel load so our task would be to calculate first the resultant so how do we calculate the resultant of these four wheel loads so it's nothing but the summation of all these four wheel loads 200 plus 150 plus 300 plus 50 that will give me 500 kilonewtons over here okay so once I try to say 500 let us try to locate the resultant please understand resultant obviously will lie between the two extreme loads end loads 250 so let me assume that the resultant are let it lie at a distance x okay from 200 kiloton that is end load and it will be at a distance of 3 minus x from the other end okay why it is 3 because the total distance between 200 and 50 is 3 meters 0 0.8 plus 1 plus 1 1.2 that sums up to 3 okay and hence we are trying to say 3 minus x okay is what we are trying to tell you so first let us try to uh, uh, we have already calculated the resultant now we are trying to look at the position of x how do I position uh, try to calculate the position of x I try to take the moment of resultant about 200 kiloton and then equate it to moment of all wi's okay w1 w2 w3 w4 with respect to the same point so that means I get the expression as r into x moment of r about 200 equal to moment of 200 moment of 150 moment of 300 and moment of 50 about the same point so you can understand moment of 200 about the same point is 0 so the next one is 150 into 0.8 the next one is 300 into 1.8 the last one is 50 into 3 and it gives me the value of x as 1.16 meters 
having got the distance as 1.16 meters, I am rewriting that here. So distance from here to here is 1.16. Distance from here to here is uh, 2.84. Uh, I'm sorry, it's not 2.84. It is 1.84 because total distance is uh, 3 meters here. Okay, so that is 1.84. Anyway, I'm not using that in the calculation right now. Okay, so what I'm trying to say is 1.16 and 2.84. Okay, I have repeated that information here, that is 1.84. Having done this, this slide will tell me, okay, the distance of the resultant between the two loads, okay. How far is 150, 150 kiloton from R? It is 1.16 minus 0.8. This distance is what I am trying to calculate. 1.16 minus 0.8 is 0 0.36. So, that means resultant is at distance of 0 0.36 from, okay, 150. But distance from 150 to 3, 300 is 1 meter. So that would be 1 minus 0 0.36 is 0 0.64. So I have carefully calculated the distance of the resultant between these two loads because I need to know which is the nearest load. So the nearest load in this particular case is 150 kiloton because it is at a distance of 0 0.36 whereas 300 is at a distance of 0 0.964 meters. So I have identified 150 is the nearest wheel load okay to resultant r so once i have done this okay i am trying to place the mid span exactly between between okay 150 and r so the distance please note okay remember because i'll be using this in the next slide 0 0.36 meters so it will be right uh, exactly between 150 and r so that means 0.18 and 0.18 the sum of that is 0 0.36 so the mid span okay is at a distance of okay 0 0.18 meters okay to the right of 150 kiloton okay and the resultant is further at a distance of 0 0.18 meters to the right of mid span so this is what you need to do okay so again we had done the same thing in the previous uh, uh, discussion also so we had uh, calculated the resultant okay we had calculated the position of the resultant and then we had talked about placing the mid span exactly between the larger wheel load and the resultant but here we are placing the mid span exactly between the nearest load and the resultant okay so the nearest load being 150 so please understand okay the mid span is exactly between 150 and r at a distance of 0 0.18 meters so this is very very important so because when i start putting the load on the beam i will start with 150 kilonewton okay which will be to the left of mid span at a distance of 0 0.18 meters okay now we just try to look at this okay first identify the mid span then place 150 kiloton load to the left of mid span at a distance of 0 0.18 meters. Having placed 150 kiloton load, place all other loads exactly relative to the 150 kiloton load. I am placing 200, 300 and 150 appropriately. The important thing is, okay, so C, section C is right at uh, 150 kiloton load, okay. So please understand, okay, so uh, uh, mid span is here. So if that is mid span, okay, that is 0 0.18, okay, and uh, uh, please understand distance from A to this mid span is uh, 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 5 meters. You deduct uh, 0.18, okay. So the remaining distance, okay, from A to C is 4.2, uh, okay, is what we are trying to tell. And again, this distance is split as 2.98. You can carefully calculate those numbers over here. Those numbers, okay. So please understand having got section C here. Okay, so my distance AC is 4.82 meters and distance CB is 5.18 meters. Okay, so this is very very important. Okay, how to place the load. So first, okay, locate 150 kil kiloton load just to the left of C by distance of 0.18 meters and then place the other loads properly. Okay, calculate these distances appropriately. So from A to C right now it is small a 4.82 from C to B it is 5.18 having done this plot the ILD okay for BM at C right so the maximum ordinate is at C we calculate it as AB by L once you calculate this ordinate at this point also calculate the ordinates at all other load points that is 200 350 using similar triangles and then we do the last step that is to calculate the bending moment at C which is nothing but the product of intensity of load okay multiplied by ordinate in ILD for each of these loads there are four loads on the beam acting on the beam 
there are four corresponding ordinates okay so everything is positive here okay try to multiply and get this value please understand the value of what is 1471 kilonewton meter please understand this is the maximum that we can get in the beam when the set of wheel loads move on the beam if you quickly recollect okay we had calculated bending moment okay at 4 meters from right support and we did found that find that it happens when 150 kilonewton load acts at c and the numerical value at that instant was 1420 kilonewton load 2420 knm obviously that is less than this so you cannot expect bending to be larger than this value okay for any section uh, and for any position of the load so this is how you try to calculate it's almost similar to what we have done in under uh, two concentrated loads okay so i think this uh, uh, completes uh, this exercise this particular uh, case so i think uh, we will uh, stop the discussion right now so we will try to take the next other other cases like absolute maximum sf and uh, 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 in the beam and uh, 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 like uh, what is the maximum reaction at the left support right support and all other cases okay in the in the next class okay thank you